sticking with the topic of college, we're switching now to basketball. We got, uh, we're going to update you on our teams that we have. Just real quick, top five teams in the AP Top 25 poll. Number one, Gonzaga. Number two, Baylor. Number three is Villanova. Number four, Texas. And number five, Iowa. So let's get into it, guys. What do you got? Where, so number four was Texas? Where, yeah, do you have that? Do you have Michigan on there? Where's Michigan? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Michigan time is number five. Five. I think they're 10. Time. Yep. That's Which all. is completely fake. Oh, my God. No, Michigan's a good team. No, they haven't played the Illini, MSU, or Iowa. And they beat Wisconsin, who's unproven. They beat Northwestern, and they beat Minnesota. Is it Wisconsin's only loss to Marquette? Um, I would have, but they haven't, um... And they didn't really lose that game, mind you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they beat Minnesota convincingly, but I think that Minnesota is also a very interesting team that we can't gauge yet. Well, like I said, Michigan changed, like, their style, I think they had. I mean, it was, like, I think... Uh, jo- is it Jawan Howard is their coach now? I forget the coach. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they got a yeah. new coach. I love Beeline, and he had his teams really disciplined. But now he's got that recruiting aspect, so now he's going to have more just stars. And it's going to be more about if he can control them. But let's get into uh, our teams first. Whoever wants to go, go ahead. Kevin. Kevin, that's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, Lauren and Jenny. I don't know if you've been following our team, but Marquette is not doing too well. They are... Two and four in the Big East, and they are surprisingly eight, which is surprisingly high. What do you think the problem is? Uh, they lost, what's his name? Um, uh, Marcus Howard. Marcus, Marcus Howard. Howard. Uh, he's literally their only scorer. They have a good point guard, but he's only a freshman, and he's not that good. So, so which is it? Is he good or not that good? I think he'll be good. Then just but say he's, he's developing. Don't he's say he's developing. Good. There you go, Kevin. <laughs> but yeah, they're six and six. They aren't, they're probably not going to make the tournament. So I really thought they would at least try to make or at least make the tournament, but no, nothing's going to happen. And Michigan State um, is surprisingly um, underachieving. They've lost their uh, last three straight games, or uh, lost their last three games. Again, they're two and four in the Big Ten, and the Big Ten is so good this year that I don't think they have any chance to come back for sure. I think they're eleventh in the Big Ten right now um, because of their record. Yeah, yeah they've been underachieving surprisingly. I still love Tom Izzo as a coach. Yeah, I mean, they did lose all their seniors. So. I mean, they'll, they'll be good in a few years. I mean, that's just how that's Michigan, how, st- that's how yeah, Michigan State here. I mean, it's, operates. It's, exactly. You the, fluctuate from you. I mean, every great organization fluctuates. What's it called? Michigan State loves to get their young guys. And the thing with them, they usually have their guys stay for two to three years. So just get, like, by next year, they'll be much better. Oh, yeah. They'll have the chemistry and everything. They'll be fine. Um, uh, Manny, why don't you go next? I got Villanova. Go ahead and put that microphone on me. I got Villanova. Take um, it. Go ahead. Yeah, what do you got? Oh, no, no, no. no. All right. <laughs> we, 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 we knew one of them. <laughs> uh, fun fact, it's their 100th year, so I didn't even know that till now. Uh, Thank you. I said that, I said it earlier. That's why you're here, buddy. I said it earlier of Villanova that they're overachieving. They deserve to be good. Like, I, okay, they're ranked number three. They're always good. No, all right, you let, me let him finish. Yeah. Let him let make his you. point there, Chief. Out, Easy. Uh, currently, they're ranked number three. Um, without a doubt, they only they're eight and one, so the record doesn't lie. But I've been saying it all along that they really haven't played anybody like that good. Like they haven't played anybody that's ranked except like one time, I think. Who um, was it? Texas A and M was it? Okay. And then I'm pretty sure, like the only time that they did play a ranked team, the, it was like a two point game. Um, but pretty much every other game, Villanova hasn't played since uh, before Christmas, and it's literally, uh, yeah, and literally like every game, the score has been eighty-eight to sixty-five. Um, they shat on Marquette, just to let you know. I mean, they always shit on Marquette. Um, so yeah, same thing for me for Villanova. Uh, in my opinion, they're a little bit overrated, uh, a little bit. All right, so then moving on, I got Illinois, and then. They have one of the best coaches in the league. All right, well, let's get Manny going because these segments get a little long. Illinois, they're currently currently 10 and 3, uh, ranked number uh, 12. Um, They're pretty good. What's the record? 10 and 3? I'm pretty sure it's like 10 and 3 right now. Um, Recently, they just played uh, Northwestern. Tomorrow, they play Maryland. Um, What's his name? Kofi Colburn. Uh, He's pretty much a beast. yeah, all I have to say so far, Illinois, they'll be pretty good. Shout and then now we got out. Duke, the <laughs> underperforming Duke. Um, last week or two weeks ago, they weren't even ranked. Uh, now they're ranked number 21. 
They're currently their record is only like four and two. Uh, but yeah, their last game. I don't know. Never mind. They played a couple days ago. Uh, they played today against uh, Wake Forest. Um, matter of fact, they playing like twenty minutes from now. So go Duke. Yeah, go Blue Devil. Uh, go Coach K. Yeah, go Coach K. Um, Wendell Moore had a huge bounce back. Game hopefully, Coach K five. isn't making excuses anymore and why his team's uh, losing oh, anymore, yeah. saying, "Oh, we shouldn't even be playing in the pandemic, whatever." Yeah. Uh, what a huh? what a female. Exactly. What a female. Um, <laughs> DJ Stewart, the man from Chicago, he's still the beast. So yeah. go Duke. Okay. Um, speaking of underperforming, I guess that'll go into me. Obviously, the Kentucky Wildcats haven't updated you guys in a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, We're three yeah. and six. No, 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 no. No, shut up and shut up. Because guess what? We're two and all in the new season, and we are learning how to win close games. New season. It's a new season for them. It's a new season. We are two and zero, and we might even run the table and go undefeated the rest of the year. That will not. That will not happen. No, you watch. This team. I'm. I'm dead serious now. This team is going to be a legitimate player in March Madness, depending on how that scheme goes, and maybe teams will drop out due to COVID. But say everything is a normal season, this team will be ready by March. Okay. We're learning how to win close games. They beat Mississippi State. Coach Cal got a double technical on the same call, and that sparked life into them. He got it when they were down three. They went on like a 20-point run and came out with an incredible double overtime victory over Mississippi State. It's hard to win games in the SEC. That was their conference or, or yeah, conference opener because the uh, South Carolina game got uh, reduced. But now we're finding out who can play on that team and who can't. And Dante Allen was a huge name in that Mississippi State game. Came out, I think he had seven threes. He dropped like 24 points, kept them in the game. He's a player, didn't really get much time before that. Now he's going to be in there, kind of like an Emmanuel quickly. He went off against Louisville last year, became the biggest part, and then worked himself into a first-round pick. So, I mean, I'm not saying Dante Allen will be a first-round pick, but this team's starting to get it together. Won a very close game against Vanderbilt again the other night. They were down seven at half. They're learning how to win close games. This team's really coming together. Olivier Arsar, he's becoming one of the best big men in the, in, in, in the country. He was the transfer from Wake Forest, so he does have experience. I think he's a junior. Um, he can play in the middle, and Kentucky always revolves around um, always revolves around their big men and how well they can play. So they've got a tough schedule still coming up. I mean, out of conference, they've got to go play uh, Texas. That's a nationally scheduled game, and then the SEC is tough with teams like Missouri and Tennessee and Auburn. Florida's are always good, things like that. Just to point out, Kentucky is second in their conference. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're doing a lot better. Davion Mintz, he's playing well. Devin Askew, uh, B.J. Boston, I don't think he's going to go to the draft. I think he has to stay another year based on his production already. He was supposed to be like a lottery pick. He doesn't look like that at all, but he'll get it together. Who do you say is your best player? Olivier Arsar. I mean, mm -hmm. Kentucky always plays through their bigs. They always have Julius Randle, Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Towns, the list goes on and on. More recently, guards, but I, I – I, Okay. I'm used to those Kentucky teams. I'd go Olivier Sar easily. Um, and that's pretty much what I got for Kentucky. They're learning shot selection. They're learning how to play with each other. They will be dangerous. DePaul, moving on to them. Um, more games canceled due to COVID recently. They, they did play their first couple games. They beat, they beat, no, yeah, uh, their first six games got postponed. They postponed another couple with Villanova and St. John's due to COVID issues in St. John's program and Villanova's. Um, but they beat Western Illinois. Take that for what it's worth. Yeah, um, good game. Illinois. Then they went to double overtime with Providence, yeah. and um, Romeo Weems showed up big time. Uh, he's going to be another player that kind of just emerged. Yeah, that's Kevin's guy, Weems, you know, for the White Sox. Yeah, yeah. um, <laughs> no, but there's not really much to talk about with good. DePaul. Um, I think, you know, they're they're still a bottom of the conference team. Maybe give them another year. This guy, this kid's a freshman. I mean, he can play. He, he really can. He can shoot the crap out of the ball. It's hard to get a gauge on them because they've only played a couple so games. Angry. Who, DePaul's? No, no, no. Uh, Providence. Providence. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Um, <laughs> moving on to my last team, Did Oregon. You watch the game? I haven't watched a ton of them, but I can Dude, give you the record. Looking pretty um, good. Talking about them. DePaul. The, no, Oregon women's basketball team. Oh, women's basketball team. They're I mean, always they're good. always good. Exactly. We, we so have I three of the top five. To no, not at all. I mean, we're eight and two. We're second in the Pac-12. We're gonna make a deep tournament run again. And like I said. That, that good karma, I don't know if you guys remember in the group chat, the good karma comes when the football team underperforms, the basketball team overperforms. I mean, that's how it went. Okay, that's how it went in 2017 yeah. when we made the Final Four and lost to North Carolina in like the BS that game. Of, that son of that went down. Oh. Um, oh, Chris Boucher. Yeah. He's now a beast on the Raptors. But, yeah, he was out in the Pac-12 tournament. Like that, that really helped. That really hurt. I mean, guys like Delon Brooks, 
are doing amazing things in the NBA. Peyton Pritchard, Rookie of the Year. Oh, candidate, just, I think. He was looking good. I, it's just serious. hit a game winner against yeah, Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, so, I'm I mean, so happy we got uh, Like I said, I haven't really watched it's them. I said they can shoot the crap out of the ball on this guy. Eugene Omari is averaging 18.6 points a game. He's shooting the crap out of the ball from deep. Uh, Chris Duarte is a great guard with experience. Um, that's a team that's, you know, Dana Altman is a really good disciplined coach. They're going to be ready for a deep tournament run as well. Jimmy or Andrew, jump in. Uh, I'll go. I got Iowa, which is, like we said our, earlier, was ranked number five. They're nine and two. Uh, Luca Garza, obviously, still national oh, player of the year. I mean, okay. he's putting up, oh, like, at least, tw- yeah, like 27, like nine and five. Mm-hmm. I Just mean, drink your power eight cap shot. Yeah. yeah listen um, to him speak the better. But um, yeah, they, they're um, they're uh, what's it called? They've lost a couple, or they lost a game that they probably shouldn't have. But what I like about watching Iowa is they have how they like to play, and they make sure that everybody else plays to that. Like they're gonna play through Luca Garza, and he's going to consistently, they're gonna like he's gonna consistently get the ball, and he's gonna completely destroy you. <laughs> you asked me before the show, would it translate to the NBA? He can shoot it. He's great. He's got very mature post moves. He's not the best outside like defender like on the perimeter, but he can guard in the post, which is good. So I think some team would definitely be happy to have him. I don't know if he'll be a star, but he'll definitely be a, at least a solid backup center to put in, especially if you need offense. We got Gonzaga, 11-0, clearly number one team. They, they deserve to be. Most fun basketball you could be watching right now. I mean, because like, I mean, you could argue Kentucky, but they're just starting to come oh, together. Kentucky's still a long way to go. I but, said um, March. March. What's it called? Gonzaga, everyone's just having fun. They're throwing lobs to each other. Um, they're yeah, shooting, they're shooting off the game. No, Gonzaga exactly. Is Wait, I want Andrew I to intervene because I know Andrew ripped Gonzaga early no, in the year. I, well, I and you're big on Baylor, so you go in that no, rip again, or you know, explain the Gonzaga situation, and then go into Baylor, and then we'll go back to yeah. Jimmy. Um, I ripped them because of their past performances. That, I mean, okay. prior years, I feel like that's fair. You know, the only yeah, thing no, we lost to UNC in the um, national championship. This year they're serious, though. This team is serious. They um, played. They beat Iowa convincingly. I mean, they mm-hmm. played great basketball all the way around. Jalen Suggs is an absolute stud. This team is deep, and this team Drew will. Jimmy. This team, I, I, I'm like thinking, in it, when it comes to March, like they're still performing well. This is my team to pick for the um. Nah. Yeah, I, you, think I, you and off. you and Mike the said it with Jalen Suggs. I mean, he's the difference maker. They've never had a Jalen Suggs mm-hmm. no, five star exactly. prospect before. It's always been a role team, and they kind of just beat exactly. up on their I mean, that's what, that's what they first. Well, I mean, they can go to their conference, but they don't do well right. outside. Go and I mean, I can I completely understand where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. Like they just they like, they do play in the weak conference. They haven't performed in exactly. big games, but, so I, I mean, can I can understand where you're hesitant for. But mm-hmm. I think especially now, everyone can see that this is uh, this is a legitimate team. Oh, 100%. It's not like they haven't beat good teams. They exactly. They crushed Kansas. They crushed Iowa. Mm-hmm. Right. No. So well, this Kansas, is, that was early in the year, and they yeah, had a lot of guys beat them. But that, I, that Iowa game, that, 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 was, that was good. That was convincing. That was that they they were a great team. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm happy. And my last team was Oak, uh, Oklahoma State. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're seven and three right now, not ranked. They're struggling. We don't know if they're if there is a postseason. I, even if they're eligible, we don't know if they're to the school or like they have the ban or whatever. We don't know how that's gonna work with COVID. Cade Cunningham, nineteen like six and si- uh, four, mm-hmm. so first overall pick. I'm just I'm just gonna. No, say. I mean the good players perform even in the worst situations. Exactly. He's doing it. I, I was watching one of their games and um the announcer said that. He went to Oklahoma City State not to show that he's a winner, but to show off his individual talents. And we're seeing that more and more with someone like a Markel Fultz, a Ben Simmons. Yeah. So I guess the scouts aren't looking for if you can drag your team to wins. They just want to see how you can play. Mm-hmm. So they're going to worse teams so they get to do more. And he's in the face of adversity with a team that came and go to the postseason because of their postseason mm-hmm. ban. So that seems really interesting. Um, I'm going to segue it into Baylor. This team is extremely interesting. They beat, they beat Illinois at the start of the year. They're fifth ranked. They beat them pretty convincingly, played, played against defense well. But since then, they have not played anyone ranked nationally, actually. We have not been able to get a correct gauge on them. They were supposed to play um, Texas and Gonzaga. Both got postponed due to COVID. Now, they come into a section of the schedule they play against a lot of their conference teams, TCU, WV, or Western Virginia, Texas Tech, and KU. So, I mean, three um, out of those four teams are ranked, with Western Virginia being 14, Texas Tech being 18th, and... Kansas being six, we'll see how they do in those that, if those three games are back to back to back. So you get a really good gauge on them and how they play in those three games. Not going to rank them. I think they're a top five team. I hope they stay that way after this. Then we have um, who, who my other teams? Big um, Ten. Oh, Big Ten. Yeah, I mean Rutgers. I was a team that shot out before. Matt was like, eh, I don't know about them, and they played pretty well so far. 
Um, they've had a low amount of games played, but they beat the Illini by three in a very close one. Um, but they haven't beaten anyone else, and they had a convincing loss to Michigan State, which is another team that's very questionable right now. So I don't know where to gauge them. I think they're a ranked team, but I don't know how high or how low their ceiling falls, considering they being a very good team in the Illini and lost to a very questionable team in Michigan. Um, just, a couple, just a couple big teams to the Big Ten. Michigan, I think, is a completely fake team. They have not played the Illini, Michigan State, or Michigan State, or Iowa, but they did beat Wisconsin, who I can't get a gauge on either. Um, Wisconsin beat Louisville, take them for what it's worth. They beat Michigan State and Minnesota, but they just lost to Maryland. They have not played Iowa, um, Illini, or um, Michigan either. So, I mean, you, you've got to wait for these later games to go in the conference and you can start to get engaged on these big time teams because that is the toughest conference in basketball. And once you see those teams start to beat, beat up each other or beat each other up later in the um, year as the conference goes on or as the season goes on, you'll see who is real and who is not. So that's what I've got for All right, now. One final word from each of us, whatever you want to say in college basketball, Jimmy. I just want to point out as Manny, our, our historian, that I just found out that was a position we had. Yeah. Um, I said earlier that Jay Wright's Villanova team is always going to be good. They're always yeah. a stud team. You're saying they're overperforming. What are they right now? Like, uh, what, what? They deserve to be definitely top three, but I mean, top ten. But no, to they me, deserve to be a top five team. They yeah, are top, all studs. Yeah, top five team. It is probably the purest form of college basketball you will find in men's college basketball. So you need is. to pay more attention to that team. You got a good one there. Um, I know it is, but I'm just saying. Dude. Watch BBN. We're back. Manny? Who? BBM, Big Blue Nation, Kentucky Wildcats. We're yeah, back. you don't follow basketball. You're up, Manny. Manny just Shout out right. to the Illini. Uh, real quick, let me, get, <laughs> let me get this straight. Uh, oh, you're Duke Blue Devils. Huh? I, I'll do them. Don't worry. I got you. you got Duke? Just, just, no, just come on. Just, just one quick, quick statement. Real quick. Shout out to the Illini. Yeah, shout out to the Illini. That's yeah. great. Like, like Manny always said first back first. in basketball camp, go Duke. Duke. Andrew? Um, go Zags. Fuck you. Go Golden Eagles. Let's go over 500. Who the hell are the I thought Golden we were saying Eagles? like a statement. Yeah, it, your was, team. it was a statement, not just go your team. But whatever, we'll cut it there. Thank All right, you. And no, fuck you. Goodbye. Done.